Hello everyone, welcome to the video. In this video, we'll be writing front-end code with Sutil. All right, so if you've seen the last video, I went in depth why we care about Sutil framework or library, which is very, 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 very new in F Sharp, so not production ready. Maybe you want to stick to uh, some React-based libraries for now, but I'm going to be writing out the main page in our stock monitoring system. So if you've been following the series, you know what I'm talking about. If not, there's a whole playlist on what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and how I'm doing it. So make sure to check that out. But we're gonna be running out, writing out the front end with Sutil and Bulma. And so we're gonna write, be writing out the front page. So if you checked out the drawing of the UI, it's gonna be the summary page with the account. And so we're not gonna be talking to the back end yet. We're just going to be writing out the UI, uh, maybe doing a little bit of styling, and uh, just to see how you can write uh, applications with Sutil. So we're gonna jump into the code right now. Make sure to leave a like if you're enjoying the content and I'll see you on the other side. Hello everyone and welcome back to the tutorial. We are writing some Sutil. So uh, the way it's gonna go is I'm basically gonna write everything out. I have many resources opened to write because you know, I don't, like I haven't, like it's not as if I, I wrote it before and I'm just doing it in front of the camera. I'm uh, doing it as we go. So uh, what I have open to help me through this is firstly I have my whiteboard and so I know what I'm doing. So today what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing this page. Um, I'm not gonna do the search bar for now because I'm not even gonna implement it soon. So I'm gonna do the nav bar. I'm gonna do just like cut off this section but I'm not going to do uh, each of the navigation items for now. I'm just going to do this part and I'm gonna do it with uh, fake data. So I'm not gonna connect it to the back end just because it'd be like a hugely long video. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do nav bar and then we're gonna do this section and then we're gonna do this section and then we're gonna do this section and then for each of the items, we're gonna do that. And so that's how it's gonna go. Um, since, so the way I like to uh, write code is, uh, you know, I have documentation to help me since Firstly, I'm learning Sutil, so uh, like I'm not even like that good with it, <laughs> and you know it's a new library, so you know it's fine. Uh, so I have what I have open in my Chrome. Uh, firstly, so I have the this is the code that's running now. So I have like a, a counter app for Sutil, which I mentioned in my last video. I also mentioned how I got here from the Safe Stack template in my. Um, I think it was in the get a, getting started with the Safe template video. So if you want to check it out. Um, I'm not going to re-explain it here. And um, yeah, so what I have open is the source code for Sutil. So the Sutil library comes with many examples. So if you go into the source, I'm sure you can't see this. So we're on the Sutil page. If you go to the source, you have the library itself. And then you have uh, basically the documentation. And so these are a bunch of examples and stuff. The examples might not be up to date with the latest version, but uh, the AppFS is. Yeah, so I'm using that as documentation. I have the Bulma documentation open to help me out. Um, but with, since I recently did my website and I used Bulma from where I used the uh, Fulma, which is uh, Bulma with like Fable React bindings. It's like a, a Fable React way to use Bulma. And so uh, I have that solution open as well using this to help me. Uh, so I'll just keep like dragging it on screen. Like for example, we're gonna start with the nav bar and I have an example of what the nav bar, how I wrote it recently. So I'm not going to uh, reinvent the wheel here and I'm going to optimize. Uh, and as, as you should like in real life, like if someone else already did something they need to do, just, you know, <laughs> just copy man, <laughs> just copy it, you know. Uh, uh, and that's not to say you should always, um, like so you, you should really think about what you're doing and why you're doing it. So you, sh you shouldn't dogmatically follow other people. But in this case, I know I have to do a nav bar. I've already did a nav bar. I'm just going to, you know, just uh, go ahead and do that. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to go back to my Chrome here and then I'm just going to put this to the side for now and I'll do it like this and I'll do this. So this is how it's going to work. And 
so I'm just going to delete everything to be honest. Uh, delete all of this. So you see it automatically refreshes because I already hit .NET run. So this is the command I'm just going to show. Alright, here it is, .NET run. So this is calling uh, .NET Fable Watch as, as I explained in my getting started video with getting started with the save template. So if you haven't watched that out, uh, watch that video, you should probably watch it. For now, our update function is going to be a simple uh, Elmish loop. So one sec, um, so model, yeah. So that basically means my update loop is not going to do anything for now. Uh, and there's no commands here, so I'm not doing a command none for now. Uh, I'll probably add it as I need. Uh, which is not going to be soon, to be honest, because we're not going to have many um, updates from the UI for now. And our model is not going to be this, so let's change our model. Our model is going to be empty for now. And so this is kind of a discriminated, discriminated union with a single case that has no parameters. So that compiles. Uh, message is going to be no op, so I'm not going to have any message. And so our model here is just going to be empty. So all this should compile. Yes. Uh, good. Here, I like to open uh, the HTML module. So there's like two options you can do it. You can do it. So you can do it like this. And it says it's grayed out because I have this uh, this, uh, this one open. Uh, no, this one open. So if I do this, yeah. Um, but... You know, you know, for divs, for like basic HTML elements, I feel we don't really need the HTML. Like div, you know, contextually, you know, in a in a web page, you know, you know what a div is going to be, you know what an A is going to be. I don't think you need the extra module attached. So it's just a preference there. So I'm just going to keep it like that. But we're going to be using uh, Sutil Bulma, and so David has been working on this recently, and uh, basically has basic. Um, so for example, instead of using divs, you know, if you just do open, uh, Sutil uh, Bulma, you can actually do, uh, a container instead. So you can do Bulma dot container and then, uh, pass it the arguments and then that will show up. So if, for example, I can just do text. Hi, that should show hi. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one sec. Well, it has great font by default. Okay. Uh, so basically, uh, how it works is um, Bulma. So I open Bulma here, and then this contains all the. Okay, I have to. I guess I have to really take a step back because most people don't know what Bulma is. So Bulma is a CSS framework, and it works uh, with Flexbox, which is like a CSS kind of newer, updated CSS mechanism. Um, hopefully you know what CSS is. I don't want to re-explain that, but CSS is a way to style your web pages. Uh, so it's a cascading style sheets. And with Bulma, it's a, a good framework to lay out uh, your, your, your code. So for a quick overview, basically how you want to design a UI. So this is kind of a quick front end course and I'm, uh, I should have full disclosure. I'm not like, I don't consider myself like a front end developer. I'm more like kind of a generalist, uh, full stack developer. So I don't have like years in design front ends, but basically how I like to design UIs is I go very logically, you know? Um, so even though design is very, you know, artistic or whatever, making UIs is actually a very logical process. So you can start by saying, I have this section. So I, I like, I like going top down and I, I know I keep saying top down, but in this case, I literally mean, uh, vertically. So we can see that there's definitely a section here that's going to be the nav bar. And then there's this whole other section, right? So first we know that it's going to be some container here or some divider here for the nav bar. And then in this big section, we can cut it up. There's going to be like this column here that's going to take a certain amount of, of width. And then there's going to be this other big space here. And this box is going to take half of its parent. It's kind of like that. You, you want to um, piece things together in relative proportions of whatever the parent is. Most of the time, that's the case. There's obvious exceptions. Um, but that's the way I'm going to design this UI. So I'm going to start. I'm going to create a nav bar. So all this is going to be in a div. So 
uh, I'm not. I don't think I'm gonna go like that in depth to explain like every HTML element. But a div, it's a, a, a section. It's a division basically, uh, and most things go in divs, like blocks and stuff. Anyway, we're going to talk as we go. So here to start, I'm just going to put a div at the root, and uh, I'm going to put a nav bar in it. So this view function. I'm going to be breaking up my views um, as we go. And uh, I like to put things in modules. So like, so a nav bar, I can put, I do a module nav bar, and then I can write my nav bar here. And I have like, I like to have like a big, so like basically I want, so I'll give you an example of what I want. This is what I did for my website. So this, is so this is like my main view for my homepage and my of my website. So if I open up my homepage to my website, and I'm not doing this for marketing, or whatever. I'm just genuinely showing you. So this is my homepage. There's this uh, landing banner section. There's this nav bar, and then there's this how I enhance your business section, and then there's this see what I do section, and then there's this uh, whatever section, and then there's this call to action section, and then there's my footer, and this is all described here like i have this div which is my main page and then i have the landing banner then i have the hand section i have the see what we do section i have the testimonial section i have the buffer section and whatever so it's very easy to logically go and describe what my ui actually is and uh that's what i like to achieve here so hopefully uh that that wasn't too much of a plug but yeah but i i, I jet trust me that, that that wasn't a shameless plug that was genuinely me uh trying to inform you so like that's how i like so the the, the the root thing it should be so simple it should be broken up into like vertical sections in my opinion so here i'm going to have like navbar dot uh you know I, it call it a section whatever but then i'm going to have like a main section and then the main section is going to be divided with the toolbar and the whatever so that's kind of how i see things for now so I'm not actually going to use a section element because the section element is actually an element in, in, a, in a Bulma. Wait, I'll just do um, whatever. Um, so here, uh, where's layout? So layout, there's a bunch of layout elements. And so a container is to center your content horizontally. A level is a multipurpose horizontal level. Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And the section is to divide your page into sections. So that's exactly how it sounds. <laughs> it, it does exactly what you, you would intuitively think. So uh, with the exception of the nav bar, which is it's kind of a section, but it's more of a nav bar than anything else, you can section off your code into vertical pieces. And so I'm going to start with the nav bar. So if I go into components, the nav bar should be the main container, and this goes into depth in the CSS, but luckily with our uh, Sutil Bulma or Feliz Bulma or Fulma, uh, you don't really need to have any knowledge of the underneath, the underneath CSS. You can just go ahead and uh, do it logically with the elements themselves. And so, um, like like these these libraries, Feliz Bulma, Sutil Bulma, and Fulma, uh, kind of give you HTML elements with the the, the CSS classes like pre-injected so you don't really have to worry about that you you you, you will eventually have to worry about the uh, s CSS variables to customize Bulma I'm not gonna get in, get into that for now so we have a nav bar then the logo goes into a brand div right so that that's the the kind of div for the brand so this logo has a brand that, that's kind of basically it and then on the other side of things, there's a nav bar menu. Uh, and then the menu has a bunch of things. We don't have a menu for now. We just have the logo. So it's going to be pretty simple to implement. So if I go here and I just do nav bar, it seems as though it's not uh, done yet. So uh, that's, that's the kind of thing you with these libraries. Um, but I can go ahead and do it myself. So since uh, nav bar has not been implemented in Sutil uh, Bulma yet, and keep in mind, this is like super alpha. So like this is like what the things is super unstable for now, and uh, not many things have been added. So uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, what I did is basically I just re-implemented 
the controls I needed. So a nav bar is really a nav with the class nav bar. And then I did an inner module of navbar to do the brands. So the navbar brand is a div with the navbar brand. As you can see, uh, you might not be able to see it, but it's like here. And then a navbar item is an, uh, it's an anchor tag with the class navbar item. So I did the same thing here. And then you can pass whatever props. So you have like children and stuff. You can pass the props and I uh concatenate the props to these props and then i pass it to div so that's basically how it goes so if we come back here and i do bulma dot navbar i can have uh, a navbar here and in my navbar so i can actually open bulma here in my navbar uh, i can do it like that and then i can do navbar brand and then my brand can contain uh, a navbar item item and then in my item i'm just going to have some text here and then i can do um stonk okay that seems to work so in our div here if we put uh, navbar dot section that should compile and if i go back here i just have stonk uh give it color so what I'm going to do is on the first line, I, I like to separate what the attributes are and what the children are. Okay, so for styling, the Sutil has a pretty interesting take on it. We can actually do CSS in the code, so uh, which is kind of like more type safe and stuff. So if I go to app.fs, there's a pretty big section here on uh, the uh, styling. So style sheets. It's Bulma with Bulma helpers, um, which gives us a bit of uh, Bulma stuff by default. And so I can do it uh, right beneath here. I'm probably missing some thing. There's just some confusion with the Bulma since I have a module uh, here and I opened this uh, Bulma. So what I'll do is I'll move this closer so I'll, I'll keep it like this, even though it's not needed, just to help me identify it's coming from where. Um, but yeah, it's kind of the things that happen sometimes. Most of the time it doesn't really affect you negatively, but this case got me in a little bit of a wild goose chase. So here I have my div, that's a nav brand. It, sh it should not be a div, actually, it should be a nav. Okay. Oh, my brand. So here's my nav item, but my brand is that big. So let me see if uh, Bulma is actually like connected or if I even have the uh, Bulma installed. So because I need to link it at the end of the day and I don't think I, I linked it in my style sheets. I don't have the style sheet linked, I, I should say. Yeah, so I do have Bulma minimized. Uh, where do I, where did I reference it? Yeah, I guess I have Bulma just with the safe stack. I think that's why it, uh, it works because I mounted the element and in this, uh, so this basically how it does is it renders this view and puts it wherever um, there is a div that's that has this as an ID. So if I uh, open up the index.html, it, it will replace it with this div. And I think, well, yeah, Bulma is referenced here, so that's why it works. So that's cool. Uh, but if all, I think the logo is a bit big. I think the divs a bit, uh, the nav brand's a bit large. But I don't want to uh, lose too much time doing CSS stuff um, for now. So I'm just going to move on and do the other section. Well, we'll maybe we should give it like another color. So let's say I want this like light gray. I can do rule, and then when it's a uh, div dot nav brand uh, nav bar, and this should work, right? I'm probably missing something. Probably missing a namespace here. One sec. I'll check the sutil. So a rule is uh, sutil.styling. So I need to open up sutil.styling. So I want css.backgroundcolor. And it says it wants a tuple. No, it wants an object. So anything will work here. And my background color is going to be... Uh, I think you can do a light gray. Does that work? Or you can just put uh, this 
Um, and I think I think they redid the CSS engine to make it uh, harder coded, uh, like type safe. I haven't really checked it out for now. So I do FF, 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 or that's actually the worst idea. If I do five 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 five, oh, I have to apply it. I, I'm stupid. And so uh, for the style sheets to be applied, I need to go here and do with style. And then I do main style sheet. It still does not work. One sec, reload, stonk. So the font changed, that definitely helps. So the style did not get applied. Oh, it's a nav. There you go. So um, we could give it whatever color we want. I think lighter, cool. So we have a lav bar finally. So what we want is we want to split this whole section into like a not a nav bar, but like a, yeah, it's kind of a nav bar, to be honest, but it's not uh, like a nav bar element. Basically, I'm trying to find a good name for this section, like this big section here. I'm trying to find a good name for it, the main section. And then I'll have let section, and uh, we can break it up into more sections. So the main section is going to be a columns All right it's going to be columns of so bulma columns and uh, in the columns there's going to be um, there's going to be a bulma column there's going to be two columns basically and i'm going to put it this on a new line and stuff like that so column one so we probably need to say uh, is so how does this work and okay so basically with columns I'm gonna bring up the Bulma uh, documentation so for columns you have sizes and basically your whole screen is 12 so um, how can I say this so columns are like um, it's a row that you can s separate into a uh, into multiple column Right, so there's columns, which is like the section of columns, and then you have individual columns, but the class has no S, and uh, yeah, you split it like that, and this is equivalent to 12, so you, you, each of the spaces, or actually it seems if you don't define the, the sizes, it'll automatically divide them uh, normally, maybe, I'm not, I'm not too sure. Uh, let's see how this example goes. Is there no, yeah, okay, so this is a complete code. And so in our case, uh, if we go to the whiteboard, like, uh, this takes up, like, maybe two columns max. So let's just experiment, like, is two. And then you have another column. And then let's see this column, let's give it, uh, let's give it a quick style node, CSS dot. Uh, background color and then we can pass it uh, uh, obviously we did not add it to the uh, main section so main oh yeah our column does not have anything in it um, so it might just not render on the screen oh does light green not exist okay I see now it seems to be taking up everything uh, I don't understand why for now oh because for a certain uh, like when, when your screen gets downsized, columns render on top of each other in Bulma. So that's like kind of the responsive aspect. Uh, not sure we wanted this in our app, to be honest. But uh, let's just let it roll for now. All right, so light green is not a color. Let's just do green uh, like this. Uh, there's probably a modifier we can use. I'll check in the Bulma documentation a little bit. All right, we are back. Um, well. I just went on a pretty massive uh, wild goose chase um, trying to find the problem because basically what was happening is uh, so this is normal like this is normally what it should look like like uh, now I put the the column uh, w one sec let's go back I'm in the wrong solution uh, stonk watch app and so like let's go back here uh, put column dot is and then I put uh, I wanted to put two so like that 
let's just go back to here. So it was like this, right? And when I was resizing it, boom, it just, because we were programming like this, and so the, the, the column was being stacked. So uh, it, how can I say this? Basically, when you're on a mobile phone, the columns will not be, uh, they, they won't be like vertical. They will stack on top of each other. It's like the, the responsive aspect of, um, of Bulma. So I was like, man, why, why is it doing this? And I was like going here, I was looking at, uh, yeah, I was going here, like, uh, looking at the columns and, uh, just like when I was expanding, I was looking for, okay, like this thing appears when, uh, when it works, but then it disappears once it gets smaller. And it says like min width, uh, 769. Like, man, my screen isn't 669. It's freaking uh, 2,000 pixels, you know? So, you see, like, it's like 2,000. Uh, I, I'm pointing at the screen, but I should really be, like, looking at, at the top here. It was like, you know, it's very big. Like, my screen is big, and it was interpreting it as though it's small. And, uh, to, like, a long story short, I'm actually zoomed in 300% since, uh, since I recorded my last video. I wanted to zoom in on the counter. And so I didn't realize I was zoomed in, and I also didn't realize that it will interpret my screen as being smaller if you're zoomed in. So if I just zoom out here, reset, everything works as expected. So wow, that was a massive goose chase. I, I like installed, I tried different versions of Bulma, I installed uh, Bulma as a SCSS thing, just trying to see if like a bright point was, was set. Uh, anyway. <sighs> So that was, uh, that was about an hour I, I, I wasted on that. I did not, uh, a lot of things I didn't know. So, you know, that, that's just kind of the thing with programming. <sighs> but luckily, um, what's cool is uh, it, it looks nice now. Okay, so I put a green background for now, and I put a yellow. Uh, th there's a bunch of things I did behind the scenes to just try to troubleshoot. And, uh, yeah, uh, so I put... So one thing I did is, if I show you my commit history, hopefully you can see. Uh, I don't think you can see this very well. But I installed Bulma. So there's a few ways you can use Bulma. You can directly link it as um, a CSS via CDN in the header page, like, um, like it was. I'll show you here. Like, normally, um, you'd do this. So you, you'd uh, link this thing, uh, the style sheet from the internet. Um, the thing of that, the thing with that is, uh, I'm not sure how to, I, I just look it up probably, but I wasn't sure how to, uh, because basically in Bulma there's, uh, variables and you can modify those variables. So I thought one of the problem was there's like a variable that was misconfigured somewhere that, that interpreted my screen being like much smaller than uh, much, yeah, much smaller than it actually is. So I tried to uh, link it the good old fashioned way with, um, npm and so i installed npm i added it in my uh, webpack thingy and then i, I had a, a style sheet here and so if i open that up i didn't add it to my solution yet i'll do that now and i'll style css and so yeah so this is kind of a variable is this is an s a sas variable and so sas is kind of to be honest i haven't used sas a lot but it, it's like a uh like an enhanced version of CSS where you can like have variables and you can have logic and stuff like that. And Bulma uses that a lot and you can have variables. And uh, so one of the variables you can use is uh, primary. So that means that it's the primary color um, and you can use it uh, anywhere, but there, there's like other things you can use. I'm not, I'm not actually using this properly, but anyways. Yeah, so that's why it's purple. We can uh, remove that line of code for now. Because ideally, if we have CSS stuff to do, let's just do it um, in our in our code. So, um, yeah, that's how it's all. It's pretty embarrassing, but uh, you know, that that's kind of the way it is. You know, uh, learning the good old-fashioned way. So, ideally, this column is going to have multiple things, and so basically, this section we would probably want the height to be 100%. So now our div takes 100% of the page. So I had to Google this. This is 100% of the viewport. 
or whatever's re remaining. Oh, I actually shouldn't be 100% of the viewport. I can do uh, class. This is like the body, to be honest. So I'll do dot body, um, even though it's not like the body tag. And then in my CSS, uh, I'll do, um, and then I'll do exactly what I did here. CSS height. And I only have to do this because I'm not going to have enough content to fill the whole page. Normally, you don't have to do this if your page is big enough. But in our case, um, we're not going to have like many things in our page. So uh, that's kind of how we want. Uh, that's kind of the reason why we have to do this. Oh, I should probably not do that. Yeah, okay, there it is. So when you add a class, you don't do the dot and then... When you do the CSS, you have the dot. That's a CSS notation. Basically, this should take 100% of the parent. And our parent here, if we check how much does it take by default, by default, it should be uh, not a lot, yeah. So we want this to be 100% of the parent. So basically, uh, this style is getting redundant. Okay, so this works, that's good. Uh, this style is getting redundant, so I'll do a CSS class with it, full height, boom, and then I can stringify that. So this works. Uh, colors ugly as hail. Let's do a white nav bar with a border and a gray thing in here. And then we can give it a string that's one pixel. Oh, it shouldn't be white, it should be uh, black. Okay, maybe not black, maybe uh, gray. That's kind of fun. Um, and so we can do like light gray here. We can do, let's try E. So basically gray should be all equal colors by now if you haven't um, noticed that. Boom, all right, this looks kind of better. Uh, let's just leave it like that for now. We can do uh, code formatting here and I don't actually like that at all, I don't think. This is kind of too long for me. I'll adjust the settings later, to be honest. So we'll go go with that for now. All right, so our second column is going to be our main section. And this column, like the innards of this column, right now there's nothing. But uh, eventually there's going to be tabs and stuff. So the tabs and stuff will go in another module, I guess. Now, uh, the only thing I want for now, we'll use it like a full page. Yeah, so this can use a section. So wh the way I see it, is we can have a section, boom. And then, uh, so obviously if I bring up the whiteboard, obviously eventually, um, actually, we should it should take the whole screen, I think. Uh, maybe not, but we'll just start with that. So let's start by doing a section here because I actually want this to take the whole spot. Uh, now, we have a lot of real estate to work with, so we don't have to cram everything together. Here in the column, the first thing we would want is a section. So actually here in the main, so main is kind of misleading, right? Because here you can argue this is like the main screen of the app, like this is actual content. The content view, uh, I'll call it content view. I think it's kind of a sucky name, but for now. So it's a Bulma that section. And in this section, we're gonna have, let, let's start with that. Let's just do uh, text, just have it on screen. You know, the nice thing as well is you'll immediately see what's immutable and what's not. So like for now, these are all immutable. It's, it's all immutable because uh, there's like no unit. There's no, um, there's no binding statements. We're just doing straight up markup. There's no like JavaScript involved. And uh, it's kind of cool to see what's never gonna change. And here, so if I go back, it says hi. And you see like there's padding. So let me change the color of the section. Uh, let's use that light gray. You know, let's keep that light gray. And one cool thing we can do, since our CSS is code, we can just do module module style. And we can have let color, let uh, light gray. So we're kind of doing our own version of SAS here. And I don't know how I thought that was gonna work. <laughs> this can be a literal, so that means it's a constant, not necessary, but just helps with performance, I guess. Light gray, and then we can erase. Um, this will be uh, string interpolation, and we can either we can we could have done like a 
this uh, thing in like a color module and stuff like that, but that's fine. Style dot light gray. I'm actually gonna rename it and screw it. Color. And like that, we reuse it. And so if I come back here, uh, the color did not apply. Did I not do it? Did I like interrupt myself? Yeah, I totally did. All light gray. Boom. All right, so you can see, um, so green, uh, if you're new to web development, uh, the green is padding and the blue is the actual element itself. And if you don't know how I'm doing that, I'm doing control shift C. So unlike here, I'm doing control shift C to see all the elements. You can also open up F12. So you get this window, but you can also get this window by doing control shift C clicking and I'll bring you to the element. I don't want the color to be applied to the whole section. I only want the color to be applied to the element. So what I'm going to do is, instead of applying the color here, um, anything downstream from here is going to have the color. Um, here we can use a container. So a container is a kind of a div, but it centers things horizontally. Um, and so let's copy this style. Now there's nothing because I removed the text. And, you know, I can just add uh, actual text that we want, account summary, boom, and the color is not showing up. All right, so the reason it didn't work is because uh, obviously, uh, it's probably obvious to you, but uh, my H5 was not in the div, it was in the section, so I kind of uh, misread that. So now we have this account summary thing, and uh, it should probably be in the container, as I mentioned uh, before. I don't like how uh, this formatter is doing it for now, uh, so I'll probably change the settings of the formatter. It's going to have a top section, uh, so we probably have to do another container within this container. So I took some time to draw out uh, what I wanted for this account summary thing, and so yeah, we're going to have account summary, so we're basically going to have what we wanted before. But I'm going to add this balances tab so I can switch between seeing how what my balances are and what my positions are. Uh, so that's one thing. And then I'm going to have open PL, so that's the profit and loss of all my open positions. And this is the profit and loss of my open positions today, or like all my positions today, how much I made today. And uh, you can see like this is uh, too short. So by default, a container um, is going to take like half of the screen, or I don't, I don't remember how, how big it's going to be, but uh, so actually let's do a div instead because I definitely, <clears throat> I definitely wanted to take uh, most of the space. So we, if we do a div, remove that. That's more of what I want. That's exactly what I want, so that's good. So inside this, we're going to have, there's actually more padding here that I didn't put that I want. So basically there's this uh, inner div and it's going to have padding, basically. That's how it's gonna work. There's gonna be bulma.container. So the container is going to have uh, some padding so the, in Bulma, for padding, we have different classes to put different types of margins. And so I want some padding uh, for our inner box. So this is going to be a class. And I'm going to put P for padding. And then for the size. So let's just try a, a small one. So if I do two. Um, go back here. We should probably add a uh, text again. So it feels like there is a little bit of padding. Yeah, there is a little bit of padding. Let's put a little bit more. All right, let's say this is good enough. So that's cool. Um, we actually want this. So if we pull up the thingy, yeah, this is completely on its own. And uh, the container will have so there's kind of like this top thing here, uh, which is which is on its own. So let's go Bulma dot container. Normally you're going to be using containers for stuff just for having um, horizontal centering. In this uh, container, 
we'll have uh, some padding top. So for padding top, I could do class and then do P top, for, so T for top, and then I can do like five. And um, so we can already see the padding there. And then in my container, so if I look if I look at this logically, this container will have a so this would be a level. So a level I'll, I'll open up Bulma. All right. So a level is when you want to have things that are kind of uh, on a horizontal line. Like this is what I want basically. So a level can have level left, level right, and like this. And so I'm gonna have a level left and a level right, and they're gonna have stuff in uh, inside of them. Bulma dot level. So, and I can put this, uh, is this not a thing? Uh, so this is not implemented yet, so I'll go ahead and do that. So I created the level uh, elements, and basically I kind of refactored this. This pattern was happening every time. So every time I had an element and I wanted to pass it a class name and with props. So basically I created this function, that will turn a function uh, that takes props and appends them to this element. And so now I can just do that with everything here. These are all functions, but uh, to be honest, it's I think it's fine in this case to be point free. Oh yeah, I have to do my own Bulma level. It's going to have a level left. Uh, do I have to open Bulma here? And so let's just put text for now. And then I'll have the same thing for the right. Because normally I do it uh, like this, right? I just put it on another line. I'm just not going to use the formatter for now until I figure out the settings I want. So I'll put this level in another function here, just uh, to help us write. And I need to separate the uh, attributes, um, the attributes of the element and the ch children element. That's why I've been doing this like white space here. It just helps to understand. It should have rendered. Yeah. So we have left, right here. So here we're going to have like uh, buttons. So these are these are kind of like anchor tags, and here they're just labels. So let's do the labels first. Actually, let, let's uh, do it this way. I'll do it in here. So uh, let's do P and L element. I don't know why I call it this way, but let's do that for now. So this is going to be a Bulma container, and it's going to have two elements in it. Uh, there's going to be the header text. So it's going to be like a H h3 and uh, you know one is going to say we're actually going to pass this in so uh, title of that and the other one is going to be um, the percentage uh, which will not go here it will go there so basically I'm going to take a num here so I'm going to take a decimal so this is the percentage basically the text I'm going to have is going to be whatever that decimal is. So percentage and I'm going to have a percent next to it. Oh, and I can't, uh, I have to escape this. So to escape uh, the percentage in a new line, you have to do put two of them apparently. And let's just define this as it should be a decimal. And it should actually be, we can actually do a unit of measure, which we haven't talked about, so I won't do it for now. Well, uh, let's do it for now and I'll explain it later. Basically, there's a feature in F-sharp that's called units of measure, and it helps us distinguish what kind of data we have. So in this case, we have a percentage point. And so what I can do is uh, I can tag this as a percentage. So what we can do is we can do measure type and then we can do percent so that will just identify that this is a type of measure so we're basically typing our primitives you want to think about it that way so in our case let's say that uh, I have a PNL element and it's going to be open PNL the percentage is going to be uh, three percent and I actually have to tag this as a decimal so I can do dot M 
Now it says 3% percent, percent, one sec. So I resolved the issue. Um, basically, uh, I can have a, a triple quote to have escaped uh, strings in here. So that's pretty good. Um, it's kind of ugly, but we'll, we'll let it slide. Okay, now I want to center these things here. I, I do span. Okay, so I basically had to put uh, a line text, a text align center on the uh, main div. So I probably don't need the span. That's good, but I kind of did like the spacing on the span, so I'm gonna keep that. It's a bit too big, to be honest. So let's look at what's the margin bottom. Yeah, so the uh, first element, I think it's the first element, or the, all the things are spaced out by default. So we can just uh, override this uh, margin here. So my title, which is this, H5 is the title. It has a, a margin bottom of 1.5. Let's reduce that to one. No, we do class. And with Bulma, we can do margin bottom should be kind of reduced. So that's actually perfect. Uh, I, that's exactly what I want. Now I want to style this uh, text a little bit. So what do I want out of it? I want um, I want it bigger, to be honest. Let's just add a new uh, CSS rule. Oh, we can tag this uh, span as a percentage. So we can do class and create a new class afterwards. That is PNL percent. And uh, I'm going to go define that in my rules. So uh, my rule is dot, it's span span dot pnl percent and so we're going to increase the font weight font size uh it's going to be a big a bit bigger than uh, normal so let's look at what's the font size for now it's 16 pix and this is the one em so em is like a relative measure of size um so let's do that let's do like um, one point, let's start 1.5 VM. It's probably too big. Yes. Let's do 1.1. That's actually decent. And I want the weight to be different. So the weight is kind of the boldness of it. So font weight and, uh, what's the font weight currently? So it's 400. I want it more than 400. Uh, let's do 600. That's better. Let's do a little bit less. Uh, it's still the same. That's fine. So that's like the next, the next biggest weight we can give it. And then we want some color. And so we're probably going to have another rule. That's going to be uh, PNL percent. And then with the class positive. So uh, basically going to have a positive number and a negative number. And the... Um, the positive number is going to be green, and the negative number is going to be red. And so uh, I'm going to do uh, color, CSS color. So that's when, when it's straight up color, that's the text color. So I'm going to put this uh, green. And uh, this is nothing. And so that's green, and I'm going to have a negative, and it's going to be... Um, red we're gonna have a bit of logic here here so with the, the only thing i'm thinking is do we pass it I, i'm wondering if we pass it a store or uh do we not pass it a store we'll just start here for now because the, the value is not changing for now anyways um but later we will have to I, i'm pretty sure i'm gonna leave it like this and you know what i just found the winning argument we're, we need to pass the store because we don't want to re-render this container. We only want to re-render this text. and Or this span, actually, because this span is going to have a different class. And so let's let's do that. So the text, let's put the, the span on another line. Let span. So the first thing I'm going to do, well, first thing I'm going to call this. So right now, we, we don't really have a model right now. So we have to rectify that. And our model is going to evolve over time, right? For now, it's going to be a simple model. 
So we're going to have open PNL. This will like 100% get refactored, but uh, it's low cost, so I don't mind too much. Uh, and it's going to be a percent. And we can put the day PNL as well. Does it work? So the model for now is going to be whatever, open PNL. It's going to be 3.35m. M, we need to put M to say that it's not a float, it's a decimal. Um, because otherwise the compiler is going to interpret it as a float. And then our day PNL. So let's do uh, minus 2 or something. And to be honest, right now we don't actually need uh, to put the store in place because we're not going to have that update for now. Uh, so maybe this is kind of a bit premature, but uh, let's go with it. So basically, if uh, percentage is bigger than zero, then so I can do class. Uh, if it's bigger or equal to zero, and I have to define zero as as this. So this is kind of the, the type safety aspect of it, which might seem uh, very annoying, but it is what it is. So if it's bigger or equal to zero, you can do positive and else it's going to be negative. All right, so here you go, it's green, that's great. If we change the value, uh, oh, I guess we passed it here, so we're not using the model. Like I said, the model is a bit premature, but if I do negative, it is negative three. That's beautiful, beautiful. Will it look like this? Boom. That's good. Obviously, it's nothing's connected with the model in the update, so it doesn't really look cool for now. Okay. So then we can add our, so that's a PNL element, and then we want to add another PNL element for our day PNL. And on the day, let's do uh, 5.23. So we definitely want some spacing in between here. So what we can do is, um, oh, actually, I probably missed out here. I probably want to do, um, in here, I probably want a level item. It might do the spacing for us. Boom. That's perfect. Great. So that's cool. Yeah. I'm probably going to separate this in multiple videos. All right. Hopefully you enjoyed that section. I really enjoyed writing that Sutil code in the front end. Uh, hopefully that gives you an idea of how to do it. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, it really helps me out. Uh, comment down below for any suggestions or comments or just for the algorithm, it really helps me out. And subscribe for more videos. And uh, if you're interested in F Sharp, freelancing, software development or consulting, I have a website down below you can check out and contact me. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.